Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And there now follows a party political broadcast on behalf of the Labour Party. Not really, but it's going to be very pro-Labour. There is a reason why I'm a Labour supporter. And what I'd like to do is take a look at the claims that the country can't afford Jeremy Corbyn's socialist programme. But first, if you'd like to receive notifications for my future uploads, then please click on the subscribe button and then the bell notification icon next to it. So recently, very recently, the CBI, the Confederation of British Industry, which lobbies on behalf of business owners, as you may imagine, attacks Labour's spending plans as costing beyond the means of the country. It's £196 billion. Now, the intention is clear. Although the CBR are dead against Brexit, particularly a hard Brexit, they are definitely dead against a strong socialist agenda from a self-interest point of view. And the thing is, and this is what annoys me, it's quite easy to defeat these sorts of arguments. The aim of the, ta the attack is simple. Tell people that Labour are a tax and spend party, that they will ruin the economy with their spending, and then everyone will have to pay for their inefficient projects through sky-high taxes for years to come. And it works. I mean, £196 billion sounds like a right load of money for an ordinary voter. I'd like a fraction of that. That sounds immense. Of course it does. Most of us simply don't comprehend the sums of money that actually represent normal government expenditure. It's how a dodgy prime minister can promise an increase in funding for a public service like the NHS or schools and make it sound like it will fix the problems. But the figure they will quote could actually just be a drop in the ocean. They'll say, I'm going to increase the budget by £2 billion. And we're all just like, is that a lot? I don't actually know. It's a lot for me. Is it a lot for the country? Is it a lot for the, for schools? Is it a lot for hospitals? I, I don't know. You know, it just sounds like a huge sum to us. That's assuming they ever produce the money, which more often than not, they don't, of course. So the first way in which I'd like to knock down this argument is with a comparison. After all, if Labour's spending plans are so expensive, could we please see them compared to the Conservatives' spending plans? I mean, they're promising to spend billions on everything under the sun and a few things beyond it, whilst giving us all tax credits as well. Actually, didn't mean to say that, sorry about that. Um, they're only promising tax cuts for higher earners. Didn't actually mean to imply that they'd do anything for ordinary folks, sorry. But the point is that we need a comparison for it to mean anything. Oh, Labour spending plans would cost £196 billion. OK, how much would the Conservatives spending plans be? Mm. And, we, and we don't know. We don't know. Um, the, the Conservatives are refusing to cost their plans. They're just making these outrageous claims. So let's try something else. We can't get hold of the Conservatives spending plans to, uh, or at least the, the costs of them to compare. So, 2010, when the Conservatives came to power, the UK had a national debt of £1,076 billion. Nine years later, it was clocked in this year at £1,821 billion. So the Conservatives have piled on £745 billion worth of debt. So that's their spending on our behalf that wasn't covered by taxes. The spending beyond the level of the taxes that we were paying. Oh, but that economic mess that Labour left us, the Tories cry. Rubbish. Apart from the fact it was a global recession that hit every country, not a local one affecting just the UK, it should have been dealt with a long time ago. In fact, it was almost dealt with by the time David Cameron and George Osborne got, came in. The problem was that the Conservatives weren't borrowing to stimulate the economy, which you do by investing in the country. They were selling off the nation's assets and charging us for the privilege. It was like burglars coming in and taking all your belongings and then leaving you with a bill for the labour. This is why the debt hasn't been paid off in all this time. Now, I disagree with much of Blair and Brown's spending policies in their detail, but the bottom line was there's still a labour government and they still spent public money on the country. Even in the immediate aftermath of the crash, they were handling things well. Essentially, when Labour do borrow, it's like getting a mortgage on your house. You have something to show for it. It's an investment that pays a return. When the Conservatives borrow, it's more like maxing out your credit cards on expensive holidays and restaurants. Apart from the memories, you're left with nothing. There's certainly no return on it. 
Compare with Germany as an example of a country that invested in itself with its borrowing after the global crash. And I have to say, not all countries did this. Some did what the UK did, and they're still in a mess. But Germany knew what they were doing. After the crash, they borrowed. By about 2016, they'd reduced that debt down to pre-crash levels. In other words, they'd got rid of the debt that they had to borrow in order to get out of the recession. The global crash, that is. And that's because they spent the money on stimulating the economy, spending it on the people and not on the chances who were mates of the government. And that's why, you know, when Germany do go into a bit of recession, it's not a major disaster because they know how to spend. When you're in a, you know, Maynard Keynes, an economist, said, when you're in a downturn, that is when you borrow and spend. And then when you're on an upturn, that's when you save and pay back. And Germany understand that. Labour understand that. It's only the Conservatives who don't. So let's see what happened in the UK. So it went up. The Labour government borrowed just as the German government did and was spending it in much the same way. But when the Conservatives took over, at this point, the patterns diverge. Whereas the UK would have started to level off and then the debt reduce, as it did for Germany, in the UK, it just kept going up, levelling off only recently, but still not coming down. And this is because they spent it on people who shoved that money into offshore accounts, not pumping it back into the British economy. And that debt, which I might point out, represents many more times the value the CBI are placing on Labour spending plans, many more times, is not going to come down until we have a government that seeks to promote growth. And Labour's spending plans will do just that. But even that £196 billion figure, which I keep saying is the CBI's figure, that's because Labour's plans don't cost that. The CBI weren't just misleading by publishing spending figures without any comparisons, which is bad enough. They deliberately inflated them. They whacked up the numbers just randomly. For example, it was reported that the figure includes, as an example, the costs of plans that are not actually Labour policy. For example, £14 billion for purchasing existing railway stock. I mean, the CBI, when they were challenged by Labour about that, uh, admitted that they knew that that was wrong. They just bunged it on. So say what you will about Corbyn, and I have said plenty and will do so again, but his intended spending programme is not a costly waste of money for a number of reasons. One, it's not actually costly. The cost quoted is deliberately inflated and even then represents many times less than the Conservative spending. They really are the party of tax, borrow, and then let Labour sort it out when they eventually get in. The spending will be on British infrastructure. It will lead to public ownership of the nation's assets again and to a better educated and trained population. That will only boost British industry, which at the moment is basically in a coma under the Tories. Let's face facts. The third thing is it's real. The Conservatives are claiming to spend money that they won't reveal the source of, but that's because they're not intending to spend a, a penny more than they have to on public services. Every financial decision they make, including spending on public services with our money, is based on how best to give it to themselves and their friends and family. And that's what they do. Even when they do spend on public services, as much of it as possible, they need to spend on private businesses that are owned by their mates. And it's also a disgraceful act. We know that the CBI are a lobby group for British business owners, but it also plays an important role in debates. And we need to know that it's honest. I would like to be able to quote the CBI as experts in any sort of debate. It is possible to defend a position honestly if you really genuinely believe in your position. You only ever feel the need to lie in a debate if you know you're in the wrong. In other words, they know Corbyn's plans will be better for the country, just not necessarily for all their members. But they can't come out and say, well, yeah, these spending plans would be good for the country, but they're not doing us any good, so we'd rather you voted against them. But they should just ask themselves, how good is Brexit for their members? This is why they wrote a joint letter with the unions, an unprecedented level of cooperation between lobbyists for workers and for business owners. Doesn't happen. Never happened. It's because they fear a hard Brexit and Johnson wants to deliver it. They really do need to be able to tell from their point of view the lesser of two evils. But for the rest of us, we need this programme. It will regenerate the country. Yes, I don't believe Corbyn's predictions for how quickly everything will be put to rights. It's not going to be sorted in five years. I also think that his inability to work with others will mean that some parts of the programme will be difficult to deliver. 
but the general idea is there and that general idea is certainly not to piss away a trillion pounds of the public's money on some rich yahoo holed up in Monaco or Dubai. The fact is that Labour's spending plans are not unaffordable. In fact, we can't afford to be without them. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click on the Patreon link for details and click on the like button if you enjoyed the video as well. Until next time, I'll see you later.